Hey, what is going on guys? I'm here. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be um, doing something a little different rather than my gaming videos, my reviews, my tutorials, any of that stuff. Um, today, I'm actually going to be making some hold downs, uh, hold down clamps for our uh, Kurt Weiss on our mill. Um, I'm going to be making them out of this. It's uh, one and a half by three eighths steel. Cut them to about 340 thousandths, uh, 340 thousandths long. Yeah, other than that, uh, I'm going to be drilling two holes in them, chamfering one of the holes, or uh, chamfering one of the holes. I'm going to be making four of these. Um, and then later, I'm going to be making some square things that these go into, and there's going to be block on the back, right? And uh, that's going to go down to the back of the table. We're going to have a T-slot in the table, or a T-nut, sorry. And that's going to hold down the vise. Right now, we only have one hold down on it, and uh, it's not that secure, so never hurts to have more secure. Other than that, um, yeah, as I said, two holes, chamfer of one. It's pretty simple, and then we're going to make the other part, and probably a video I'm going to make tomorrow, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so now we got our parallels, and we're going to go ahead and take and slide these in. Uh, you want to make sure you keep even pressure across them, and just slide it across. If you feel a bump when you get to like this area right here, chances are it means you have a burr, a chip, or something in there prohibiting you from sliding your parallel in which is not good, you want to get rid of that ASAP. And like in my case, see, I have something, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe off that. Uh, wipe off that, around that area, because I think I had a burr there. So we're going to go ahead and take, and there you go, slides right across. So chances are we have like a chip or something there. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our, um, our part, our piece of steel here. Um, in this, basically we use these uh, Rex 98 things, I call them Rex 98, uh, things. They're high speed steel tools, I think. Um, anyway, we take and we put those up against the hard jaw on the vise. And you don't you don't want to put it on your uh, your moving jaw because sometimes your moving jaw can be a little bit off and if you're in a really precision scenario you want it to be perfect. So in our case we gotta close the draws in about I would say three quarters of an inch. So we'll go to yay about there. Okay. So now we got our jaws uh, reasonably close to where our part's going to be. And now we want to put our part in. Okay. And then we'll push up against that section with our, uh, I call it the aligning tool. Rex 98 aligning tool, high speed steel tool, whatever you want to call it. Uh, make sure that's in there. And just make sure that is up against that edge. As you can see, it moved there. Can't have your part moving. Okay, now we can go ahead and tighten that down, check it again. All right. So, now we have our part in there, and our vise, it has a zero in this direction, okay? So that zero is 10 inches on our scale down here. Um, this is that we have it set up. Yours might be, I don't know what. Um, but it's going to be some number. Well, it needs to be some number. That way it's uh, set. So, in this case, we need to move over, I believe. All right, we need to move over exactly two inches from that face, okay? So, we're going to come over here, or we're going to come down here. Alright, so we're going to come over here, and in my case, I'm going to move it over to exactly, um, it'll be at 12 inches, in my case, because we start at 10, because that's our zero of the edge of the vise. So I'm going to move over to 12 inches. Okay, so we're getting close to it. And now, we're going to come over here to our... None of you can see that very well. Um, but this is going to show you each of these, I believe, is, i got to remember, I think it's ten thousandths. So a full revolution is going to be a hundred thousandths. And so in our case, we're about halfway through, so we're going to keep going up, 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 up. That's all right, you can't see this very well. And we're going to go to zero, because we're going to exactly two inches. So we're going to set that. Now we're at two, uh, two inches. Okay, so now that that's set up, um, we are exactly two inches on our part this way. And that's where our first hole needs to be. In this case, um, we need to raise up our head because we're a little low and we cannot get our drill bit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and raise up our head. And we're going to be drilling on this and a half inch hole. Or sorry, three eighths inch hole. Because um, this is where our T-nut, um, the bolt for the T-nut is going to go through. Let's open up that up. Okay. 
So um, we're just going to be drilling a hole all the way through this. And we're going to have to do the same thing with all the others. It's a pretty simple job, really. It's not that hard. I'm going to go and lock our top again so that way it's good and straight. It's done. All right. And obviously, before you do this, you're going to want to make sure your machine's oiled up. Um, you got all your ways to make sure they're clean. Um, you don't have junk everywhere. And in this case, there is quite a few chips around here. Um, but that's not affecting the actual cut or anything we are going to be doing. Um, without further ado, it's pretty simple. We're just going to drill this hole. I'm going to be using Rapid Tap. Um, I love that stuff. It works better than WD-40. Obviously, WD-40 is uh, only really for aluminum, and it, it works okay for that. Um, Rapid Tap, it works really well for drilling um, and tapping. So that's what I recommend for it. If you have something else that works, by all means, you don't even really have to use any form of coolant or lubricant on this. It's just better. You'd probably burn up your bit. You'd probably damage it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Sorry, drill already. Alright, so I like to drill a little hole down there and make it like a pond. Put some rapid tap in there. So now a hole's drilled on this part. So this part first hole done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take this part out. Okay. And then I'm going to grab that other bit of steel. Because remember we have four of these to do. And I'm not going to move the head, obviously. Abs or the table, necessarily. Um, absolutely no reason to do that. Just put your new part in. If you only do one part, obviously you would go on to your next, uh, next position. So we're going to go ahead and align that. And that's, this is why we align it. So that way you can take all the parts, and they're all aligned from this face. Even though this face, um, I just sanded it. It's not milled or anything. You could mill it, and that's probably a good idea. I just did not want to take the time to do that. Because none of these parts I'm making necessarily have to be precision, but I want to make them to the best of my ability. In which case, I did not do that. Um, but yeah, go ahead and tighten up our vise again. And we can get to drilling the next hole. So uh, pretty simple, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other two parts. All right, so um, while I went to the bathroom, the other parts ended up finishing themselves. Um, they have mines of their own, uh, like a lot of things you do with the machine. And that only reason that I actually worked is because I have a manual machine. If you had a CNC machine, no, this never would work. Oh, uh, yeah, just kidding. CNC is way better. Um, manual machines are really, really fun. Uh, okay, so unfortunately, on my drawing, I forgot to put the distance from this face to that hole. So, luckily, I made this drawing in a one-to-one -one fashion, so I can take and measure that with my calipers. Now, the only issue with this is there's no center point on the hole, so um, you got to take, move over um, with your calipers to the edge of the hole, and then you'll have to add up half of 380 to get to the center. Alright, so I ended up remembering I made this hole half inch. I'm not doing all the math to do that. And I could. It's pretty simple. I'm not going to show you how to do that because I'm, I do not know how. No, I'm just kidding. I do, but take too much time. Other than that, it's a half inch, so we're going to go ahead and on the table. All right, so as we all remember, um, our zero is 10, so we have to move over a half an inch from zero. Each of those lines, the small lines, those are all 100 thousandths. So the center line will be 500 thousandths, a.k.a. half an inch. So we're going to get close. Then we're going to come over here. And we're going to go ahead and bring it right to zero. And you have to be quite accurate with that because I'm really picky when it comes to making things zero, okay? And uh, that's the way I want it. So yeah, now we're in the right position for our next hole in the part. And that hole is going to be drilled at quarter inch because it's just made to accept 
a quarter inch screw um, and we're going to be adding a chamfer on top of that to finish up the part. So we're going to go ahead and put our quarter inch drill into the thingamajig. By the way guys, you should never leave your uh, drill chuck keys in your actual drill chuck. It's not safe. What the heck is this? Okay. Something was wrong there. Alright. Um, there's a burr in there or something. Not a burr, but a, um, a crooked me doing the drill bit putting in job thing. Alright, so now we got a quarter inch drill bit in. Um, same thing. We're going to take our part and go ahead and wipe it off real quick. Make sure you have a clean part. And we're going to go ahead and put it back into the chuck, or the vise, uh, rather, and now I'm going to go ahead and take and find where I put this thing, there it is, so there's our, uh, our um, measuring off device thingamajig thing, and we're going to go ahead and do that, tighten it down, check it one more time, looks good, now, we're already going to be moved over half an inch, so in this case, we just have to drill a quarter inch hole. Very, very simple, very, very easy, very, very quick. Without further ado, let's get started. So it's um, basically the same as drilling the 3 8 hole. Um, you could mess with all your speeds and feeds and get that to um, what you need it to be. In this case, I'm not going to mess with it due to the fact that I'm trying to save time. And actually, it seems like it's cutting very well. And if you wish, you can look up a speeds and feeds converting chart on uh, online. And we're through. Alright, so in this case, you can either do it two ways. You could take and grab your chamfering tool you're going to use, in this case this one I'm going to use, and you can throw it in there and redo that real quick, and uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and go through all of them and get them done, and then we will take and add the chamfer. So again, um, I'm wiping off my part, get all the oil off and everything. And make sure you do not put your part in this way, because otherwise your hole will end up like somewhere over here and it'll be all screwed up and you'll have to remake that part. So in this case, um, make sure you do it the right way. Very, very important. That, that's about the only thing you could do to screw up your part in the position I'm in right now. And that seemed like it moved a little, so I'm going to go ahead and check that again. And we're good. So I'm going to go and get this drilled, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so I just got done drilling the last hole, and now we can go ahead and chamfer this one. Um, obviously, don't take it out and put, it in, or put a different part in unless you need to do something to it, in which case I do not. Go ahead and take out our quarter inch drill bit and throw in our chamfer tool. Um, and in this case, we're going to be using an 82 degree chamfer tool due to the fact that uh, the screws I'm using are 82 degrees, which is mostly normal. So if you're using a screw and you're wondering which or what uh, angle you should have your chamfering tool at, chances are it's going to be 82 degrees. Make sure to double check because, um, well, you want to make sure you have it right or you could. Uh, not have it right, and you need it to be right. So, um, we're probably going to be all running a little fast for this, so I'm going to slow it down just a hair. Not much, um, just to help pull through a little. So, I'm going to slow it down just a hair there. And, seems to feel alright. So, I'm going to grab my screen here. Okay. And, I'm going to see if I need to go anymore. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and check it, and obviously, not deep enough. So, oh jeez. Alright, and that is why you do not lose your screws. That could have gone a lot short. Imagine I, was, imagine I was machining this as an ocean. Okay, that could have been all goofed up. You do not want to do that. Alright, so we're going to take a little bit more. Um... And there is a 
set depth you need to go to do this. Um, I'm not going to go look that up currently. So again, we need to go more. And then on the others, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a stop, right? So I go down to the stop, and they're going to be done to exactly what I'm going to need. Um, so they'll all be the same. Okay, that's got to fit right there. That should be plenty big. Okay, so we're not quite there. Um, we have a little bit left to go. And then we'll finish up. Alright, so this should be enough. And it is. So, that's where we got to set our stop. There's a couple ways to do this. One way, well, there's, I don't know a couple ways, but anyway... Um, I'm just gonna take go down until I just barely touch off. Then I'm going to come up with my stop and go in just until I touch that, and I'll, you'll feel it stop. All right, and there you go. Now you're all set. You got your stop set, and you can go and do this to all the others. So to do it to the other one, uh, like we've been doing the whole other time, take your part out, make sure it's cleaned off. Um, come over here, and my uh, my parallel moved a little. You probably should reset that, and in this case, I'm not going to reset it due to the fact that the height should not have changed, and it should have just slid a little. So it is just fine. And actually, we've got a little burr on that face. Well, that's a little burry. All right. So we're going to tighten that up, and now I'll show you how much easier this will be. Alright, so we went down to our stop, and now if we take our screw, pop it in there, it's exactly what we want. So that's why you set a stop, otherwise it would take you years to do all these. I mean, not years, but... And they would not be the same either. And obviously, you want all your parts to be the same. Um, and I don't mean that by if you're making something, you automatically want the other part to be the same. And my parallel just came out. So if that happens, you need to go ahead and take your parallels out. Uh, grab a rag or air hose. Make sure you blow it out first. Uh, and or grab a rag. Obviously, you're going to want to grab a rag in the end just to make sure all your faces are burless, clean, or chipless. Everything is out of the way. I feel like I've said burrs like 15 times. Go ahead and clean our parallels. And you know the drill. Go ahead and slide our parallels right in. Just like so. Make sure your surfaces are clean. Okay, so we hit a burr. Or a uh, chip. <laughs> I'm just saying everything's a burr, not even a chip. It's just a burr. Okay, now I'll try that again. There we go. All right, so now we can go ahead and grab our unchamfered part, aka this one. Toss that onto there. No, I don't mean toss it. Uh, set your part on there. And I'm gonna go and do the rest with all the others. All right, um, so now that I'm done with all that, We've got our parts done, as you can see. We've got our chamfer in, chamfering all of them. That's all done. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing to these parts is going to be adding a chamfer to the end of them, and it's going to make them have like that look on the end, as if it were, per se, a normal, uh, normal hold down. See how it has like the chamfers, all those chamfers on it. Um, yeah, I'm going to be adding that. And I might add that in that vi this video, but chances are I'm not. Um, I'm going to go to bed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to probably have another video coming out tomorrow of me adding the chamfers to these. And um, getting these blocks made, these threaded blocks. Um, I'll be pretty fun. I'm going to have another video coming out tomorrow. Hope you guys did enjoy, and I will see you all later.